Hello, I'm Deborah Sims. I'm a CLL patient from Melbourne in Australia, uh, here at ASH 2019 for Lymphoma Australia and the um, Lymphoma Coalition. I'm here with one of my docs, um, Professor John Seymour from the Peter McCallum Centre. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Always good to talk with you. It's um, an incredible ASH. What have been some of the key themes for you? Um, so in the, in the realm of CLL, let's focus there, probably the themes are those of consolidation. Um, in recent years, we'd had emergence of targeted therapies, emergence of time-limited treatment, emergence of the theme of minimal residual disease being meaningful. All of those I've seen as no longer beginning or emerging, but clearly consolidated. Those are now within our management structure. Emerging next issues are understanding resistance. Why is it that a disease initially responds to one treatment and then learns tricks uh, to become resistant? That's now beginning to be fleshed out. And then a newer class of therapies, and in particular, the cellular therapy, so-called CAR-T, can we use them safely? How effective are they really? Is there potentially a place for CLL? So that's on the emerging side. But most, most of the information here was bedding down and saying, yes, this is real. Yes, this is reproducible. Yes, this can be applied in the real world. What was interesting when you were presenting the update on four year from the Murano study to me was just that those patients now that you're reporting on have been off drug longer than they were on drug. Yes. So this is, I mean, time fixed duration therapy is now, as you say, becoming just, it's real. It's, real. it's part yes. of it. Do you want yes. to just update everyone on what you presented to the conference? Yes. So this was uh, an update of what's called the Murano study but a combination of a targeted pill, um, venetoclax, that um, binds to BCL2, together with uh, a long-standing effective therapy in CLL, an antibody uh, given against CD20, what's called rituximab or rituxan uh, in different jurisdictions. Adding the two of these together achieves a very high rate not 100%, but a very high rate of what we call deep remissions, where we can't feel lymph nodes, we can't see lymph nodes on scans, we can't detect disease in the bone marrow, even when we measure at very, very deep levels, so-called MRD negative remissions. So we can achieve that in the majority of patients. That's the goal of treatment. Control the disease deeply enough to be able to then cease treatment. So this study used that combination, was able to achieve deep remissions and stop therapy in all patients. Now, as you said, the average follow-up is more than two years after stopping treatment and roughly two out of three, 68%, but two thirds of patients who got to that two year time point are off drug and still continuing to be well. We don't know what the average will be but it's already revealing that things are not consistent. There are some subgroups that do better than others. And again, we talked about that theme, depth of remission. So what level by this MRD measurement things are at when you stop treatment is now becoming informative for what might happen and how soon it might happen. So in the past, MRD was a very, very powerful tool for comparing how effective is treatment A to treatment B across a population of people, comparing group A and group B, I believe we're now at the point where this test is able to guide what are we expecting for this individual patient. And, and that is diagnostic testing. I mean, one thing that has come out here from me that from an Australian point of view is that, you know, in CLL, we have basically, two, well, we have multiple different diseases, but there are two very clear, you're un, at, from the beginning of your disease, from the first cell that, you know, 
is, is um, cancer, you're either unmutated or mutated. And if we can have a test at diagnosis or, or before treatment, certainly, that can stratify patients into high risk and um, someone that might be able to be indolent for a very long yes. period of time, that, that's obviously very important for doctors at that point. Yes, it is. Now, that classification of mutated versus unmutated, now, importantly, that's not talking about an individual gene like P53. It's talking about what's called the immunoglobulin gene status. Uh, and that stays with your CLL cell for its entire history. In the era where we were using chemotherapy, that was profoundly important dramatic differences between one group and the other. One of the things that's emerging if and for Australia, I hope when we have access to these targeted therapies in the first treatment, that difference is now um, disappearing. That we're seeing regardless of your immunoglobulin mutation status, outcomes being equivalently favourable. And that's, uh, you, you mentioned when these novel therapies when. are available, and that is in, in you know, countries such as Australia and Canada and the UK, where we're publicly funded systems. The idea that um, it, it also then lends benefit to this fixed duration, yes. not being on a drug for the rest of your life. Yes, the, there, are, there are many reasons why fixed duration treatment is desirable there's, let's take it from the patient first, always begin from the patient, in terms of inconvenience and the potential for uh, toxicity. These drugs are very well tolerated, but they are not completely free from side effects. And so being able to be free from the burden of taking a pill and side effects is desirable. From the disease perspective, it may reduce the possibility of further um, development of aggressive elements in, in the disease. And from the health system perspective, it becomes more cost effective. If we can use these expensive therapies selectively for just as long as we need to in the patients who need them, it allows our health system to provide better care for the entire uh, community. And that's what we all want. Well. Professor Seymour, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Enjoy the rest of Ash. Congratulations again on Murano and uh, enjoy hanging out with all your colleagues here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, always, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> and um, just to a, a final note, Australia and Australia's clinical trials program, Australia's doctors and clinicians and Australia's uh, advocacy and public representative groups are so visible and so prominent here. Um, we are uh, at the speed at, at the level uh, of uh, everywhere else in the world, um, and so our patients are being well served.